For the Lord himself will descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive will be caught up in the skies with the Lord, and there shall we be with the Lord forever. This is the hope of the church. My name is Faith Noble Adra. Do you want to understand the realities of these end times? Dr. Linus Pauling, a winner of Nobel Peace Prizes in 1954 and 1963, said he believes, and I quote, the greatest catastrophe in the world is approaching, unquote. What about you? Join me on the rapture this and every Friday from 5 to 5.30 a.m. on Sky 93.5 FM. Beloved, hell is the greatest tragedy that can happen to anybody. It's as good as you never come to this world, even in the first place. And all of you, one day you will bring to heaven or hell. It's, it's real. Before I continue today, uh, on the rich man and Lazarus uh, case study, I, I just want to draw your attention to the events in Libya. You know, Libya has been on our prophecy watch, and I've been telling you that the alignment of nations in these last days, according to the prophet Ezekiel, sees Libya aligning with Russia, Iran, and some other nations. I spoke to you extensively on that. What I want you to understand is that from the developments that are happening in Libya now uh, with the death of Gaddafi, many of you would have thought that the Libyan uh, people would come up with a government that would favor the French, the British, the Americans, and their NATO allies who aided them in this crisis. But according to uh, the prophecy in Ezekiel 38, for some reason, Libya will eventually align herself with Russia, Iran, the core enemies of the West. So whatever went on in Libya, uh, the word of God tells us plainly, it won't favor the Western, it won't favor NATO uh, for some reason, and that is the word of God. God said he put hooks in the jaws of those nations. In, he mentioned Libya specifically. And so uh, the fall of Gaddafi doesn't mean uh, anything much, hallelujah. And one thing I want you to understand is that it's not that the world is heading for a better democracy. The West dictatorship is ahead. Many of you might be crying for democracy, rule of law, checks and balances. All these are good for a couple of years ahead or, yeah. But then, according to the Bible, the world will end on a worse dictatorship that is far worse than Hitler, Napoleon, uh, whatever, Charlemagne, you can mention them, Stalin. The world will end on a bitter dictatorship. And that dictatorship is not coming from Africa, it's not coming from the Middle East, it's coming from Europe and the Western Empire. There are a lot of things that you may not understand. Uh, there are brains behind the scenes. All these things are working in the interest of uh, those brains behind the world order. There are many things we can explain to you, but with time we'll look at all those things. Uh, the world is actually going to be ruled by a few elites and there's nothing you and I can do about that. The only thing we can do is to make sure that many people hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ, repent of their ways, and be ready when the Lord Jesus returns. The world is going to engulf in a lot of bloodshed from now onwards. There's nothing you can do about that. All that we have to do as a church is to meet the master's mandate. Can you see human beings degenerate so much that every day they are celebrating about uh, bloodshed, massacres, and all those things. That is not how God created human beings. But uh, it tells you that we are living in the days of Noah. Uh, the whole world will be filled with violence, bloodshed. Jesus has every reason to take the church out of this world any moment. And there's nothing you and I can do about it. But I just want to advise you, don't be among the people who will be gnashing their teeth should the eventuality happen. Yeah, the world is not safe. And I'm telling you that... This world, we are walking on the brinks of eternity. You and I are marching. Left and right of us is two deep places, heaven and hell. Gaddafi dropped into one of them yesterday. Today, many people will drop into uh, the two sides. What about you? Hallelujah. Today, I want us to continue with the story on the rich man and Lazarus. We look at uh, the profile of the poor man uh, last week. One thing that amazed me about the story Jesus gave you in uh, Lewis Gospel chapter 16 uh, verse 19 going was that it was not repeated by the other writers of the gospel talking about John was there when Jesus narrated this issue I guess about the rich man and Lazarus who else was there Mark was there 
Matthew might have been around, but none of them recorded their own versions of the rich man and Lazarus story. And I've been wondering why. Perhaps God, that is my opinion, maybe God doesn't want any slightest change in this account, any variation. Because if you look at many of the things Jesus taught, all, all the writers, they repeated them the way they heard it according to their own disdain. There was no contradiction, but they added a little bit of stuff to them. But when it came to the rich man and Lazarus, only Luke recorded it, and I believe it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And if Satan is to have the opportunity to remove one account about hell in the Bible, I believe he will remove the one in Luke 16. This story is so important. Don't walk out of this world into the burning flames. Are you listening to me? Now, listen. A pastor was talking about uh, sending a message to studio to be played about hell. And he went around town distributing flyers, about 5,000 of them. Telling people that tomorrow I'll play this message on radio. <laughs> and the next day, people were waiting to listen to the message, and the message was not played. The people in the studio looked for the tape. They never found it. Why? The devil doesn't want anybody to hear about hell. He wants you to hear about prosperity, uh, breakthrough, principles of wealth making, and all sorts of stars. But don't forget, for the wise man, like the fool, will no long be remembered. In days to come, both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. Death will come someday, somehow. I don't know. But I want you to get this. Now today, I want to uh, emphasize on something in the rich man and Lazarus story. That is the transition into eternity. Let's imagine five minutes before you die and five minutes after you die. It's a great stuff. A lot of things happen around that time. So in Luke 16, 22, we are told the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died and was buried. It sounds very simple, but it's a lot of things. And um, imagine the poor man died outside the palace. Obviously, no funeral for him. Uh, they will call the town council people uh, to wrap him in some polythene and bury him at night. Maybe the police will do that if it were today. You get that? He has no reputation. He died outside the palace, but something happened. He was carried by angels to Abraham's side. Now, uh, from many of the accounts that we've been looking at, uh, many of the reports that are coming, many of near-death experiences, divine revelations, they all keep portraying the same stuff, that at the time a safe person is about to die, a lot of things happen. Angels will be around uh, that is why some of them, you see them, when, when you've ever stayed with somebody who is about to die and the person is saved, at times they have the opportunity to tell you that I'm going home, I'm going to be with the Lord, uh, take care of this, take care of that. At that time, something happened, their spiritual eyes are open. Angels may appear in the room at the time they are talking, but even by the time they die, angels will be there to escort them. And this is something that you must know, because you are going to die someday. Even if the Lord Jesus doesn't come in your time, you're going to die. And the point is that will angels be there to carry you? I was looking through and I picked this account from uh, Catherine Kerr. She wrote a book, Revealing Heaven. And she had uh, many of these supernatural experiences. Many of these books, testimonies are all over the place. Don't ask me a stupid question that is it true or not true. You believe the newspapers. You believe many eyewitness accounts. We use them in courts. We do many of these things with it. I'm talking to you about something uh, that pertains to your soul. And uh, you have to believe it. Anyway, you are not under any uh, compulsion to believe. But this is what she wrote in her book. She said, whatever brought a person to this moment, whether natural death at old age, sickness, disease, or accident, it is always the same. As you draw your last breath, your spirit begins to leave your body. You will begin to feel weightless and float upward. That is the safe person. If you look back, you see your lifeless body. If there are other people in the room or area where your body is, you also be able to see them and hear their comments. You cannot communicate with them because you have left your physical body and are now a spirit being entering the spirit realm. You do still care about those you are leaving behind because you love them, but you are now entering the precious promise of God to be with him. And then she continued to write that if you were sick, injured, or in pain before, you now realize that all those same things have completely left and that you feel wonderful. Also, if you were elderly, you are now young again because age has no effect on your eternal spirit and that is scriptural if not already present the angels will appear to escort you on your journey to heaven they are magnificent beings still aglow from being in the heavenly realm 
they always know your name and usually assure you that all will be well no one is left to find their own way uh -huh. so that is uh, just an account uh, to tell you that it is true that angels quickly appeared as soon as the the poor man died and picked him to abraham's side are you getting it and that is the case often the case i've been trying to look to scripture to see if i can get any accounts like that and what i notice is that it, it, we have some accounts in scripture that shows some kind of confrontation over the body or the soul of a man uh, by forces of good and forces of evil talking about angels or devils i believe what jude wrote in uh the verse eight to nine of his letter jude i believe uh god was just giving us a spiritual account of what transpires when you are in your spirit state or what it transpires over each and every one of us as we take our turn in eternity the bible tells us in jude 8 9 that yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of moses now know this this is about the body of moses not about his soul does not bring against him a railing accusation but said the lord rebuke thee there was a confrontation between michael the archangel and the devil over the body of moses of course maybe the devil wanted to make some uh, kind of religious uh, 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 stuff out of the body of moses if they are fighting over the body if they are contending over the body you can imagine what happens to their soul there will be a struggle over the soul of everybody who died in the old testament why because the charge accusation of sin is against everybody so uh many people die devils drag them straight to hell and others to die very few die and angels are there to escort them we you can take a look at another account in zachariah 3 1 to 5 also showing the same spiritual battle over the fate of a man before god and the devil hallelujah bible says then he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the lord and satan standing at his right side to accuse him the lord said to satan the lord rebuke you satan the lord who has chosen jerusalem rebuke you is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire now joshua was dressed in filthy clothes and as he stood before the angel of the lord the angel said to those who were standing before him take off his filthy clothes then he said to joshua see i've taken away your sin so here we are again looking at a spiritual picture this was a vision uh, seen by zachariah the prophet and it shows satan and the angel of the lord still contending over the fate of somebody uh, called joshua the high priest here what i want you to understand is that one day you are going to die in the new testament i don't think there will be any contention over your soul if you belong to hell they will drag you straight to there the devils will come no angel will show up to defend a wicked person no angel will show up to defend a pornography addict no angel will show up to defend a drug addict no angel will show up to defend a christian who live one side for the world another one for devils who have a free celebration over you they will carry you like the way the rebels carried Gaddafi yesterday they will carry you like that and send you to the pit you must know this because this is not optional everybody's going to face it if i'm to leave the world today angels will appear and pick me up if the lord is pleased with my work and i have a witness of that in my spirit if you have to die today upon all that we know about you hallelujah satan is referred to as the accuser of the brethren in revelation chapter 12 verse 10 the bible referred to him as the accuser of the brethren he has a lot of accusation he's the chief prosecutor against your soul he's gathering all the evidences against you all sinners will be accused by him when they are in their final moments if you don't live for christ christ won't defend you no angel will step there you'll be a free career for them they will snatch you to hell so what are the evidences you are giving to them in your life are you living your life humanizing or oh, homosexuals lesbians whatever thief bribery and corruption some of you beating your wife mercilessly some of you cheating on your husband all kinds of things in the new everywhere you can lay down your head someday will come and play drums people will come celebrate mention all things about you but it's a joke that is just the, uh, the niv about your life god has the king james version and it has all the details about your life and it's going to determine whether angels are going to carry you or, uh, or, or devils are going to drag you now i've been looking at many of these accounts and one thing i notice is that on earth the devil has a lot of servants 
you know the bible made us to understand that god has assigned to us angels each of us have angels who watch over us uh, matthew eighteen ten, jesus spoke about we having angels or these little children have angels uh, who behold the face of the father in heaven all the time and look at it the devil has angels just like god has angels assigned to you the day you depart from this world they will be the very uh, that angel who escorts you all together with other angels who escort you home are you getting it likewise i understood that the, there are demon spirits who assign to you and they are to entice you watch this oh do this sin against god rebel do all this thing. reject the gospel harden your heart when you obey them they are the very people who drag you the day you are dying they will come in your room you see when people are dying some of them unsafe people you see they are just locked they are seeing something they want to see it, but they cannot see it something is happening uh, the devils are taking their position they are coming to drag the banker they are coming to drag the president who doesn't know god who is not safe they are coming to drag the medical doctor that doesn't have conscience they are coming to drag him that time nobody no security officer can rescue you devils are there they will tell you oh we lied to you we we fooled you now we are going to take you to hell and i've read many of those accounts and it is scripture i've had a personal experience of the soul departing if the soul is departing on sale it is something it is the most terrific thing no i can't describe it the lord showed me that on two occasions i stood outside my body before and you see the body on the bed like in a coffin or something like that you see there's nothing you can do unless the lord put that spirit back into the body no you have gone into eternity and that is the end of you and the time you are going you know that you are going to hell or heaven haven't you heard of people shouting that they want to receive jesus at their dying moment and they never got the opportunity to do that so many is away a sick person may know uh, where he's going um there is no two ways about that so all of you must learn wisdom and know that this world all that you are seeing one day you are going to walk out of them imagine the bible says the time came the beggar died angels carried him to abraham's side the rich man also died and was buried we were told he was buried you can imagine how his funeral would look like billboards all over the place everything announcing him he died they will say a true son of africa is there state funeral but that doesn't matter it doesn't make anything some of you are even in church today you are not living like people who want to go to heaven all that you do all that you have you, you you want to see is a big funeral being organized for you you are a shallow-minded person if you think that way funeral you see people in a lot of groups all that they want is what befitting barrier it's a shallow-mindedness what is funeral they can dump you into the body if they like what matters is your soul devils or angels will be on standby to carry it but the sad issue is that many people are being carried by devils to hell there's no two ways about it. you see many of you if you are to go to a funeral and you know that the person is in hell everybody who is misbehaving will stop misbehaving at the funeral if a person is to go to heaven those who are weeping that they've lost a loved one who is best into jubilation and that is a faith anytime you go to a funeral don't be thinking about anything ask yourself the person lying there is he going to heaven or hell simple as that all of us must wake up and learn wisdom church this is what we must know and this is what we must live for what is funeral today we invest a lot of things in funeral we don't care about people when they are alive if they die now no imagine imagine today medical doctors are on strike imagine some of their own some of these medical doctors are even church leaders some of their members will die they will be the very people go and preach organize very good funeral for them what kind of christianity is this when people are alive we don't care about their souls we claim we are christians we don't look like jesus christ at all we care for dead bodies than the souls of people but one day devils are going to drag you to hell and punish you forever or angels I know we may not want to talk about this thing but today it's better we call a spade a spade if we are condemning homosexuals we should be quick to condemn all these atrocities but many of the people who are supposed to be condemning these things are guilty themselves and jesus will show them the day he comes hallelujah no the man died bible says he was buried he was not carried by angels you can imagine what happens to him uh, i want to pick again an account um from the lady i mentioned to you her book she described also what happens to the people when they die unsaved. You soon begin to feel the sinister presence which is coming for you. And then suddenly demons appear and take hold of you with their claw-like hands. Horror fills you as the stench of death fills the room. You are unable to fight back because Satan now owns you. No matter how you fight or scream, no one will come to help you. Your family or friends cannot see nor hear you or even 
if they could they will be helpless to prevent what is about to happen when you reject christ you become the property of hell when you die they begin to pull you downward until everything disappears into darkness as you enter into the yawning mouth of the underworld other demons will start to yell in glee as they begin to mutilate your being the pain and the agony is real and she continued to write some other things hallelujah so that's what happened to the rich man after dying he turns left right nobody was it there to help he couldn't find all his business partners he couldn't find all his personal security guards he couldn't find all his uh, uh, no all his fans he walked out of his body and devils were there to escort him to the place of the wicked eternal banishment don't be hearing it a story because it's going to come to your turn and it is not what we say about you that matters it's what god says about you that matters this is a time of repentance many of you are fooling yourself too much what is all these things about no you want to own this whole world and throw your soul to the dust beans of hell what is wrong with you no you want us to they say oh faith you are scaring the people with this kind of hell message at least i'm doing better than those of you who are pampering them to hell who are pampering them with sweet words to hell you see i saw a pastor a presbyterian pastor who had a, a near-death experience he wrote a book the other time the title of the book is that uh, heaven and hell the ratio is what one is two thousand every one person that goes to heaven correspondingly thousand people go to hell he was worth 150 million dollars i'll tell you about him in this series and he came back and gave all that he has because he has now gone to see that all this in his vanity when you are keeping them to yourself people must be warned about hell but when was the last time your preachers predestined predestined you anton levey uh, he's the founder of modern satanism he authored the black bible he led campaigns for modern satanism leading people to accept satan as their lord and personal savior and um, in his dying moments this thing happened to him a comrade of satan was about to die he thought he was going to receive a rousing welcome to hell and i i read some of his scripts on the net and he was saying that he just want to be in hell that was when he was alive he just wanted to be in hell when you're a christian you come there he will torture you but he doesn't know what is in store for him even the devil is under torture in hell what about you and when he was dying people were around him minutes before he passed out of the body he began shouting oh what have i done to myself what have i done to myself and that is what happened to every sinner as devils appear there you will lose every arrogance that you had on the earth you work with them they will escort you all the funerals we have been going you think many of them have gone to hell and we have wasted our time in vain playing drunk doing all kinds of things live for christ so that you will not be dragged by devils to hell are you understanding me there will be devils on standby to escort you here now let me show you something kenneth hagan how many of you know uh, pastor kenneth hagan he died i think 2003 by i think every minister will know kenneth hagan and at the age of nine he was taken to hell three times by the lord and he wrote in his book i believe in visions uh, something and i want to quote that to you he said i did not want to go to the jaws of hell that, that was when he was sick and he had experience on three occasions on one of the occasions he said I did not want to go to the jaws of hell but as a metal jumps to a magnet my unredeemed spirit was drawn to that place coming to the entrance of hell i paused momentarily i sensed that one foot more one more step one more yard i'll be gone forever upon reaching the bottom of the pit i became conscious of some kind of spirit being by my side i had not looked at him because i could not take my eyes off the fires of hell but when i paused the creature laid his hand on my arm to escort me in unquote so that is it uh it's a confirmation one day when you die unsaved they will carry you there's nothing you can do. you can't resist them you get out of your body then you will know that you are not a body you are a spirit and not a temporal spirit but an eternal spirit with an eternal soul and then you understand the words of jesus christ that what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul bible says the rich man was buried and bible says in hell he lifted up his eyes job 21 13 says they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to hell they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to hell job 21 13 and that is the rich man's story what will be your story no you see some time ago yeah somewhere this year the lord showed me in a vision i saw a man i knew i knew very well and I saw him standing before a fire. He was t- 
told he was going to be thrown into that fire. And he was shocked. He trembled. He did everything he could. Then later on, I was having a vision of several accidents, 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 brutal accidents. Two weeks later, the man I saw, he died. I was at a funeral anyway. But how will you feel when you know that a man is already going to hell? But that is the truth. You see, God has been speaking to me on this subject frequently. And you, those of you uh, who have listened to us, we come to meetings. We don't speak about anything. Aside hell. Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Now, let me remind you of the question that Jesus asked. For what shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Jesus went throughout Judea asking this question. Many of you have not answered that question. Many people in church have not answered this simple question. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark 8, 37. Jesus asked the question. Kings have not answered that question. Presidents have not answered that question. Many pastors we have today have not answered that question. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Man is not an animal to eat grass, have sex, and do what? Sleep, have fun, and that is all. Man is an eternal spirit. Jesus said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? No, you see, it is only Jesus Christ who can ask this question. No king, no billionaire can ask this question. Do you know why? They don't know where even 5% of the earth's treasure is located. Let me show you something. The Bible tells us in Colossians 1, 16 to 17 that, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Now, Jesus Christ could have been a great showman when he was on earth, if all things were created by him. Imagine what he could have done when he was on earth. He knew precisely where every gold reserve on earth is located. He knew where every oil deposit is located. He knew where every diamond deposit was located. Where every bauxite is. Every precious mineral. He knew because he created them all. Let me show you. He demonstrated that. One day, Peter and his colleagues went to fishing. They couldn't find fish. What did he do? He told them, cast your net there. He knew where it is located. They needed money to pay some tasks. What did he do? He told Peter, go to fishing. The first fish you, you catch, you just uh, open it. You get the money. I'm going to pay. Jesus knew all these things. He knew where every world in this world is located. And he is telling you that what shall you give in exchange for yourself? Look at his profile. The pastors are telling you that, oh, it's just a matter of, oh, God want to bless you, want to give you this, give you that. Jesus is asking you, what shall a man give in exchange for your soul? Judas Iscariot said, a man can give 30 pieces of silver for his soul. And that is what he did. A rich man came to Jesus concerning salvation. He said, oh, I have my wealth. I can give that for my, for my soul. He's the creator of the soul. He's the creator of the world. And he's posing the question, what shall a man Giving essence for his soul. Let me tell you, when Jesus was on earth, he could have commanded a fighter jet from the sky and be running it and be driving it all across, uh, uh, flying it all across Judea to show that he's, he's the epitome of power and creation. He could have commanded billions. He could have led the governors of Judea, the Roman emperor and the religious leaders. He could have led them to Takradi here and show them the oil deposit here. But if he had done that, that's what the disciples would be doing when he leaves. They will not go after the lost. But Jesus was not here for the world. He was here to seek and to save the lost. He was in their homes. He was in the slums. He was in the shanty towns. Because he knows what it meant for a person to rot forever in hell. That's the preachers. Do they know this thing? He could have led them to Takwa to show them the gold reserves and all those minerals there. He didn't do any of that. He was walking on foot, looking for the lost. And if this personality is asking the question, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain this whole world and lose his soul in hell? He is simply telling his creation that, you know what, among all my creations, your soul is the most precious thing and valuable. Do you understand that? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? The rich man gave his, gave his wealth in exchange for his soul. No, 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 he loved his wealth more than his soul. And he went to hell. Jesus is asking the same question today. Have you answered that question? What will be your answer? Some of you, you said it's better to give bitterness in exchange for your soul. You said it's better to give lying in exchange for your soul. Some of you, the, the answers you are giving, some of you small things that you are giving in exchange for your soul. 
you should be asking god very important questions concerning your salvation for yourself not all these fanatics on the pulpit today leading you to hell this is the opinion of god you can take it or leave it let me remind you the rich man has been in hell for more than three thousand years now you are on earth 40 years and you are crying that you are suffering make sure you don't go and join him because it's an eternal journey god bless you for being on the program with me today i may have sound very tough to you but that is the opinion of god you can take it one thing i know you are not going to be pointing your finger that i didn't want you men are going to go to hell today in numbers i don't know when your turn will come to go to eternity if you want to receive jesus into your heart you want to be saved it is only the blood that can save you nothing by the blood pray this prayer after me say dear lord jesus i believe you died for my sins first and foremost to save me from hell i appreciate that i repent of my sins i accept you as my lord and personal savior i believe also that god raised you from the dead come into my heart lead me all the days of my life let me not go to hell god bless you you are going to join me next week we are going to go step by step i'm not going to rush through this thing because eternity is endless so i must spend all the time warning you about this subject until the same time next week don't forget to answer this question what shall a man give in exchange for his soul god bless you amen Bless you for listening to this message. For any inquiries about the message you've just heard, you can call any of the following numbers: 0243-381-684-0279-935-868 or 0201618-2826. To get copies of these and other messages by the preacher, call the same numbers. Don't forget the word of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 16.22. Anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Just the songs we